Okay, I think we can start. So today, so we're gonna try to discuss about the chapter nine for the large data and cloud, uh, cloud native. Uh, so actually, literally this one is just kind of how, if we have a large data set or a special temporal data set, how we can handle these things and then how we can manipulate these things in R because Usually in R, actually R is a kind of a single thread kind of a statistical software. So there is a, some of a, a kind of a limitation when we dealing with a very, very large data set. But the thing is in this chapter, in case of the special database, in this chapter actually discuss about the, how we can effectively deal with, handle with a large spatial or special temporal data analysis by using R. So when we have a kind of a, large data set is a kind of a very too large for the, it is hard to fit into working memory or we cannot downloading or fit into the, our hard disk drive, it's too large. And also downloading to the local image infrastructure is very hard to do that. And then in here, it's actually have a, there is a, some of the kind of a method saying that uh, using the compressions and then, and then some of the LERC algorithm used for the cloud sourced GeoTIFF kind of data set. And then the other one is just kind of a fast access to the sub regions. So we only looking, we only looking at the, those subset region of our interest. That means we just try to as kind of a filtering or querying the, those special data set to use it. Just only looking at the just small area or accessing the viewing data to the incremental resolution. So that means like we can zoom in and zoom out kind of things. Maybe we can zoom out, maybe some very detailed level of the uh, database is gonna be aggregated to the more larger pixels to get the more larger raster grid, grid, unique grid. And then the final one is just kind of optimizing the data access. So these are the, some of the all possible way when we have a uh, when we have uh, those kind of a large special database. And then down. And then okay, now we can talk about the some vector data set. So the the simplest thing we can do for the vector data set is uh, just kind of reading the local disk. So like uh, we can, it, it, you know, we already know about the, these things by using the SF packages because SF package there is a kind of a function called uh, lead uh, lead underscore sf. So we just by setting up the those kind of a file path and then we can just read the file and then just bb box, bb means is kind of a bounding, bounding. Uh, it is actually abbreviation of the acronym for the bounding box. So we just only, what this one actually says is kind of a filter by it filter by the our bound bounding box, which is the defined here, right? By using the this BB, like a bounding box functions, we only looking at the sub region that really, we really wanted to look at. These things is just kind of one of the methods we have uh, some of the large special data set. We just looking at the sub, sub regions by using the read SF and then read the, those things in the so local disk. And then the other thing is to actually use the query functions to do the ST read rather than to try to set up these kind of a BB functions. Because if we only read the file, only one subdiv sub subdivision or subregion file, maybe first method gonna be works okay. Because we only use these kind of only one single BB box variable. But the thing is, if we have a multiple sub regions, we cannot always detonating the, these kind of bounding boxes for the each sub region. In that case, query method is gonna be the more useful when we try to do the multiple polygons or multiple sub regions to import our data set. So these are actually what is called a uh, uh, query, query argument, which is the made by SQL like a single query method, single query language. So I think that this one is actually kind of a query, query language is quite standard, but the thing is there is a kind of a, uh, open source data, large data management software called PostgreSQL. 
maybe I think I ever, I think you guys already heard about this one. And then inside of this one, there is actually another add-in package called PostGIS as a kind of add-in. So by using this one and these SQL languages together, we can actually deal with a large special data set. There is a, when you Google the PostSQL, PostgreSQL or PostGIS, there is a whole bunch of the tutorial website. You can feel free to check that out. And then, yeah, you, if you want to learn about these PostgreSQL or PostGIS kind of languages, you can feel free to check out the, just by the Google it. Or maybe if you check about the, maybe what is called the Udemy or maybe Coursera, which is the MOOC kind of a course network, you can also audit, you know, audit the, some of the SQL courses. So, and then maybe hopefully they might also have a post critical courses, I guess. And then in that case, you can actually learn about how you can deal with the large spatial data by using the, this kind of a single query method. So these things is the query, and then we can just read a, just only selected sub region. So this is another way we can do. When we, when we really need to load in the, our special data set in the local web, this kind of and the other one we can also talk about is the using the DPPLRLR. It's another another uh, very efficient data manipulation method provided in R, like the DBID connect. And then you see, you also see that there is a package called R post query packages. This is the post query SQL. And then uh, you can set up the local host and the DB name. And then based on the things, you can actually read the file. And then you can actually use in the most critical query in like this. Like a select a select a single column and then that geometry attributes from the NC database, which is the that database name. And then a limit three is we just only select the top three record from the that uh, that data set. So that's the number of row is gonna be the three. Okay. And then another thing, it looks like we can do the same thing, like using directly using the this query method. And then as this select this one, it is actually kind of what is called the post uh, GIS add-on function. So whenever you setting the post GreSQL, you will have, you will be asked about are you gonna install the post post GIS or other uh, other special data add-ins to use the use those things in the post GreSQL like post GIS or maybe PG agents kind of agent based model etc. There's a a little bit a few add-in that you can use in the uh, post GreSQL languages and then. As the intersect is the kind of a function for for the post uh, post GIS function that allows us to the intersect with the uh, uh, intersect with the geometry and then uh, another geometry data set. So those are the things we can use for the query packages. And then maybe by the way, maybe I can show you the post GreSQL look like. Maybe I think everyone knows about the post GreSQL, but I, uh, to be honest, I haven't, I recently did not use the post GreSQL recently, but the thing is I have a chance to learn the post GreSQL and uh, post GIS packages about a year ago. And then I was able to use this one maybe whenever I have chance but I never have a chance to the using the this post GreSQL because I didn't have a chance to use the large da special data set. So yeah, so this one is a kind of good thing. So you can uh, uh, enter the your password and then there is a servers. You can feel free to uh, using, and then there is actually, you can loading the, this kind of a database 
and then the PG agents jobs if you have to do this and then the table space. And actually this schema, like a table, in the schema under the table, under the schemas, these are actually what is for the, what you usually commonly work on the database. And then you can actually using the, in here, you can actually type the, your SQL languages whenever you have a table imported. Okay. Uh, okay, first degree SQL, the double quote, and then a single quote matters more. Yeah, not interchangeable. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, because uh, that is another thing we have to we have to be very careful when we use the, these kind of languages. So yeah, in here as you can see, this is actually single quote, right? And then a double quote. In here, but this one is actually double quote because of the, this one can be reading as a string in the query quality functions. But in the actual SQL languages, double quote and single quote also test the uh, test a lot of differences. So yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Okay. So is that is there any questions or anything to be add? To add? Did you download the uh, that that uh, the post -SQL? Yeah, yeah. It is yeah, it is open source software. So you can when you Google the here like a post SQL, and then there is a website at the top here. Okay. And then you can download in here, and then depending on the, your 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 OS operating system. And then you can download in, download the installer. And then here, 15.3 is the most recent version. And then you can feel free to downloading it. Okay. okay. But the thing is, you should be very careful because uh, when you install the PostgreSQL, there is actually several steps. So you have to be make sure to follow the step for the installing the uh, PostgreSQL, okay? It is not kind of a kind of a user friendly kind of installation. There is a lot of options you have to choose when you install the program. So you have to Google the another thing like a PostgreSQL installation, and then you have to follow the, those steps. Okay, because you have to set up the something like a local proxy, and you have you also need to the, set up the, your master password to access to the your database. Even if you can set up the database into the, your own computer, you also need to set up the password for your master key. So, so these kind of things is a little bit complicated to when you install the PostgreSQL. So you you just make just make sure to the uh there is a lot of a uh, blog or some of the website that uh, tells you about the, how to install the PostgreSQL and also PostGIS. So just check out those links or Google it and then follow those instructions, okay? Okay, so here is the thing. And then um, and then the other thing is that we can just uh, in, importing the, this kind of a library and then filter and collect those things and then just using it, like a filter by the ST intersect which is the kind of like a post GIS kind of a languages. And then the other thing is here is the, 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 the other way we can using the large special data set is the reading from the online sources or web services, like by using the R curve uh, kind of a options. Like when we have a online special database, like a start with uh, this HTTPS, this is actually kind of a pretty similar about the web scrapping for the special data set. So it is not exactly the same, but pretty similar kind of a mechanism. We, you just you just finding the, when you have an online special database, you just export those things by using these kind of options to extract those data set into your local computer without downloading the actual file, okay? And then the other way you can do is the API and then open street map, open street map. Like a, actually uh, using the API is the more convenient 
because you can also directly uh, extract the data from the OpenStream Map website. Like uh, this is the OpenStream Map website. Like uh, you can actually downloading, export uh, some of the uh, by setting up the some of uh, some bounding boxes. You can feel free to downloading the, some OpenStream Map, or maybe you can use the Overpass API, and then just generating the, your API key, and then you can try to using those things on your own by using the API languages. Uh, API key, I mean, not the languages. So there is actually R, yeah, R packages. Yeah, go yes, ahead. Uh, before you go uh, forward, can you, can you just go back uh, to, um, because I've tried um, not to the PostgreSQL uh -huh. it in the uh, in the book. Okay, I've just tried to um, use the code. Okay, so and I uh, yeah here exactly here. So this yeah. PG, uh, uh -huh. vibe. So mm -hmm. I've uh, installed this R post. Greece um, mm -hmm. package, but it doesn't work. Yeah, because because yeah. you didn't you didn't install the post Greece sequel. Ah, okay. Post, okay. Yeah, post our post Greece is just kind of only linkages to to the post Greece sequel. Without install the post Greece sequel languages, you uh -huh. cannot using these packages. Ah, uh -huh. uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. 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 All right. yeah. Yeah, so that's the reason why to use the this all of the this code, you have to install the post code, but still you have to follow the install. Install is a pretty complicated, so you have to Google the web on Google yeah. about the post code installation and then follow the instructions. So uh, API and OpenStream map is another function we can use, especially for the API. Like uh, once we get the key for the API. Key, maybe we can feel free to extract the data from the those from the online uh, special data website. Because usually, maybe for example, like uh, when we have a New York open data, in this case, maybe this is the New York open data. They actually have a lot of a special data set in the in the their website. If you want. If you want to use the their data set without downloading the each file, you can just feel free to uh, learn about the, how how you can get the API data API uh, uh, key. You just ask you just ask them to to get the API generation. I think it can be possible to be here, I guess, and then. You can get the API, and then by using the that API, you can get the access to the those New York uh, New York New York Open dataset uh, without downloading the each uh, each file into the your local disk. So that's the how you can. It is very useful, and also when we use the census uh, U.S. census uh, dataset, they they also have an API key. And then you can also feel free to generating your own API keys to downloading the census data set without downloading the actual file. That's actually what I usually, uh, what I commonly use. Because for example, like uh, there is a package called census API. This package actually allows us to the access to the US census data set by using the API key. So feel free to check out the, these packages and then you can find that the, how you can manipulate or uh, downloading or importing the census data set without downloading the actual file. Okay. Yeah, API is a quite good method and then that's the, actually what I commonly use when I have a have a data set to use. So this is a downloading file. It, but in here, it uh, the others shows about the, how we can access to the OpenStreetMap data file like uh, by using the, this downloading file and then bounding box setup. And then uh, we can uh, designate the path. 
and then read the that, that path, and then SDDB box, and then plotting it like this. And then geo park it and geo arrow is a kind of under the currently under the active development kind of packages. And then this one is a, what is called Apache project kind of things. I'm not I I do not know what the Apache project is about. It's I think it's kind of a large big data big data manipulation or management kind of a projects, I guess. But this one is uh, another way we can do, like uh, if we have a very large cloud-based special data set, there is also another option to do that. But I'm not familiar with these kind of packages personally. So maybe maybe if we have chance, maybe we can have look at these things later in the future. And then the 9.2 actually talk about the, how about the rest of data? If we have a large, Large rest, large data, rest the data set. How we can deal with it? So this one is actually also another four possible way we can do. Like a computation gonna be postponed as one well pass. So that means a lazy, lazy evaluation. So in that case, maybe when we importing the rest the data, we do not compute all of them to import the raster to get the all detail level. We just are skipping or not calculating the those things depending on the our unique grid side. And then we just try to aggregating those things, just kind of estimating. Or maybe we can also only data ask for the by user or storing the intermediate result to be avoided in favor on the fly computation. So we just are storing the intermediate result, not the on the fly computation in the detail. Or maybe maybe the useful result gonna be generated. So it is also quite similar to using the DPLI uh, DPLIR, and then uh, it it has uh, there is actually a package called the stars package, and then we can actually using the this star package, and then using the that one, and then in here split it, and we can read the ST stars from the file, from the connections, this one, by using the our, our proxy level is the true. And then in this one actually allows us to the reading, skipping the more computation to down to the more detail level. We just try to reading the rest of the data set in a, in a, in a kind of an intermediate kind of a result, not the whole kind of a detail level of the pixel calculations. And then these are the, when we try to plot the P, these are the kind of a code we can use. And then plotting the, these down samples set to the 18, that means we just only show the pixels that are the, can calculate as an intermediate region, not the every detail level of the calculations. So, and then the other thing is uh, we can use a lot of remote rest sources, like uh, we have uh, uh, access to the online raster data set. We directly access to the, those things online without downloading the, those data set and then using into the, in, in R, just kind of uh, connecting or linking those things and then uh, importing those data set into the R, okay? And then the other thing is uh, if we have, uh, these are the kind of raster images we can use about the, how we can deal with the large raster images. And then the third one is a kind of, a, what if we have a very large, extremely large data cubes, which is like a special temporal data set. That is a very large data set, right? Because in that case, there is a several way also we can do. Just, just like the finding the, those data set and then the downloading the data, those data set can be the possible way. But the thing is, those are the takes too long, uh, takes uh, such a long time. So we can try to think about the cloud native storage kind of a uh, uh, process, data processing by uh, uh, using the jar, I think, Z-A-R-R -R jar, that's what I pronounce. And then by using the, these kind of a cloud, uh, cloud native storage services, we just uh, directly access to the, those things on website, online, without downloading the 
uh, directly downloading the this file individually. And then we just set up the, those bounding red bounds, like a BB box, like a bounding box. And then we only care about the, those bounding box data step. And then the other way we can also use about the API, like uh, like use like the same thing for the vector special database. If we have a very large these kind of data set, we also use the API, like uh, Google and Google Earth Engine also providing the API keys depending on the your, I think your purchase level, because uh, they are the proper uh, proprietary data set and uh, they actually sells the API key based on the how many, how much you need for the uh, for the their data set. And then by using that, you can get the API key. And then uh, you, by using the dead API keys, you can import uh, those large data set without downloading the actual databases. I think uh, this is it. Cause uh, actually these are the all, over, all about the manipulation about the large database. And then uh, there is a several way we can do, but personally, I, the person the most commonly used things that I use for the, these things is the kind of like by using the get the API key for the, some specific data set and then uh, using the that API key and then uh, we I'm gonna try to do the direct access to the those data set online by using the API key not the, the other part of the method like uh, some kind of, some kind of a clouding services or maybe website kind of access maybe if you have a experience about the using using uh, some of the, uh, using some method other than the API keys just please share your thought um, I'm welcome to hear it but for my for now based on my experience about the dealing with the large data set if for personally to be honest I I have never chance to use the large such a large special data set before and then the other thing is, uh, I even if I have a large data set, the most commonly used things that I use is to get the API key to directly access to the those database and then using them. Or maybe if possible, maybe I can try to get the downloading the those data set personally and then I use it. Yeah, because I never have a chance to the using the kind of a peta, uh, petabyte level of the data set before. I think that uh, some of the kind of a, uh, uh, like a geolo geologist or maybe geographic uh, researchers sometimes use the very large data set if they have a special, some of the climate changes or surface temperature data set with the with special and temp uh, time dimension in it. In that case, they actually have a chance to use in the these data set. But as a social scientist and in the urban planners, I never have a chance to do using those kind of data set. We don't have those data set actually. So, uh, I think that this is it. And then uh, actually in here, they actually deal with a lot of models for the data. You know, actually chapter one through nine is basically about the, how we can deal with the special data database. Right, and then uh, what's the basic concept of the data structure for the special data? And then now, from now on, in from the chapter ten, we now thinking about the how by using the this special data space, how we can deal with how we can develop the model to identify the relationship between the intensity of the those special pattern and then the related to related factors that explain the those special variations. So these are the kind of a basic concept of the model for the special data. Like uh, we have uh, observed the special pattern. There's the explain one, and then the smooth function gonna be the like the special pattern to uh, to explain the that observation pattern, uh, special pattern, and then the remainder. So I think this is the end of the end of the chapter nine, and then 